Okay, guys, Panzer J back here in Operation um, GoldenEye. We're up to turn 13. I think this is July 42, maybe? Or is it January 43? Let me double check here. It is July 42. So we are going to do 13-4 for the Commonwealth and 13-5 for the Free French here. Um, so if you saw last turn, I had a little bit of a setback. The Italians took uh, Eastern Egypt, so that definitely wasn't good. Uh, there were two mistakes that I made um, in that battle. One, Global War uh, 36 enthusiast uh, pointed out I didn't land my fighter on the uh, light carrier I had there. That would have prevented his planes from being able to reach. And without those planes, he wouldn't even have attacked. I had like uh, six infantry, a medium bomber, a militia. He would have only had units attacking with a one except for one cavalry at a two. So he wouldn't even have bothered. So Egypt definitely would have been safe. Um, and that was definitely a mistake, but I actually, I hadn't even thought of, um, the fighter being on the carrier, preventing the, his planes from coming through that zone. So even though it was a mistake, it was something I completely overlooked. So the one mistake that I didn't overlook and that I made that I should have uh, rectified was I had these three transports here. Uh, and I only brought over four units to um, Eastern Egypt. There were two more units I could have brought over, an infantry and a cavalry from India. Also, I didn't build a militia in Eastern Egypt that turn when I could have. So that's three additional units I should have had in, in Eastern Egypt. So that was the one mistake that I was aware of. And just, I don't know if I thought maybe he wasn't going to take the risk and even try it, or maybe I was uh, strong enough to defend, but those three additional units would have uh, tilted the battle in my favor. So uh, definitely a mistake, and especially when you consider the two units I left in India, all they did is take two territories worth an IPP apiece. So that was, you know, just completely ridiculous to, um, you know, even put Egypt in jeopardy for two IPP. So I uh, definitely got to learn my lesson there. I was trying to accomplish several different things, and I should have focused on the most important, which was clearly holding on to Cairo, and um, that didn't happen. So that was uh, definitely a pretty big setback. And now he's trapped my fleet in the Mediterranean because um, he owns both Gibraltar and uh, Cairo now, so I can't escape there. Although the good news is with that, he has no ships in the Med and my fleet is so strong that if he tried to come back in, I would crush him. So he's not going to be able to um, use any naval units whatsoever in the Med for the rest of the game. So I suppose that's one good news. And then if you guys have been watching, uh, the one really bit of good news for not just the common turn, but the Allies was Moscow held on. So... Global War 36 enthusiast went into Moscow and was defeated. Um, if he would have won that, it was game over. I mean, there was zero chance that the Axis were going to be stopped at that point. I mean, with Moscow having fallen, if he would have captured it, um, he would have taken all of Madman Dan's money last turn. Uh, the Russians would have been absolutely on their last legs. And then that would have then allowed um, Germany to focus everything in the West. Um, so... Uh, not saying that the Axis aren't going to still win. They still have the upper hand at this point, but uh, at least with Moscow holding on, it gives a, a chance for uh, someone other than the Axis to win at this point. Um, Japan is still <laughs> rolling, um, though that is a huge Navy. I'm not even sure the U.S., what the U.S. is really going to do at this point. Um, they're pretty much about even for income, so... I'm not sure what we're going to do over there. But as far as the UK goes, let's get into um, our tech rolls. So we've got three again this turn. We're going to try for improved factories, which is at stage two. And then I guess uh, jet fighters and advanced artillery, I suppose. Not confident at all that either one of those would be completed regardless, but we'll give it a try. So first, uh, advanced artillery to seven or higher. And we got an 8, so we go to stage 1 there. Uh, jets at 8 or higher. 
a two misses, and then improved factories at seven or higher, and 11. So we got two out of our three. So let's put advanced artillery on the board at stage one, and then improved factories move up to stage three. So we almost got that done. So actually, if I can finish off improved factories, that's six techs completed for the UK this turn. So that's not bad at all. Okay, so on to purchases. Uh, the UK had $44 to spend, and I think we're spending 43 of it. So we're buying uh, two fighters for 20. We're building an air base in Normandy, and we have an improved construction, so we can do that in one turn, so that's six. Um, an anti-aircraft gun for four, that's 30. A colonial infantry for four, that's 34. Two militia for four, that's 38. Uh, militia upgrade for two. That's 40, and then we are lend leasing and infantry to the USSR for three, so that's 43. We're saving a buck. So we still owe the USSR for the air transport they sent us, so that's what we're uh, sending that infantry over for. So save a buck for the UK. Uh, the FEC has eight to spend, and we're spending all eight. We're going to buy two colonial infantry, um, and Anzac has six to spend. They're going to spend two on a... Uh, militia upgrade, and then go ahead and save uh, the other $4 for uh, the U or for uh, Anzac. So combat, we have a couple of combat moves. Not too many this turn, um, but we got a couple. So the first one is going to be over here in Belgium. So there is an SS Panzer Grenadier in Belgium. I am going to bring over two Marines from London. And I'm going to use my four fighters that are on these two fleet carriers in the in the uh, English Channel. So two Marines and four fighters. Now, I did ask Global War 36 enthusiast if, if he wanted to scramble. He does have a jet in Western Germany. I haven't heard back from him, so I'm going to go ahead and assume he's not going to scramble. Um, four fighters and two Marines against an SS Panzer Grenadier and a jet is definitely a defeat for him. He would lose that jet. Almost definitely. So I'm going to assume he's not going to sacrifice the jet. So that's going to be one battle. Then here in the English Channel, we have four naval transports. So from London, we are going to pick up two artillery and two marines. And the two transports are going to come down and go one into 24, and then 2 into 34. And they're going to drop off two Marines and two artillery in Osteria Navarre. It's not worth any money, but we're going to take that from uh, Germany. So that's our second battle. And our third battle for the Commonwealth is going to be over here in Africa. So we are going to take uh, this one infantry in Abyssinia is going to move up one to Nubia. And then one of these three transports here in 82 is going to come down one to 83, pick up this infantry in Italian Somaliland, two back to C-Zone 82, and drop that infantry off in Nubia as well. Um. And that's up one for uh, the UK. So let's go ahead and move them up. And Italy down one. So Italy drops to 11. I hope I'm um, updated in terms of who's where on the IPP chart. And then UK up one to 26. So I believe those are my only three combat moves. We don't have anything as the FEC or Anzac. So that should be it. So we only have one uh, combat to roll for. The other two were walk-ins. So we've got four fighters and two Marines going into Belgium against the SS Panzer Grenadier. Um, I forgot what he defends at. It's either a four or it might be a five even. So let me go ahead and look real quick and see where uh, they defend at. So, SS Panzer Grenadiers, they defend at a five, okay? So, I got my two Marines and my four 
uh, fighters. So let's go ahead and roll the four fighters first. Six or less here. And we got two sixes, an eight, and a 12. So we killed him. And then he gets to return fire at a five and a 10 misses. So we take uh, Belgium back with the two Marines. And that's worth $2 for the UK. So Germany down two. I have them down to 66. Now that doesn't include their money from Vichy. And then UK is up two to 28. And that is it for uh, combat movement. So now on to non-combat movement. So let's see. We have... Uh, two remaining transports in the English Channel, okay? And they are going to pick up the two remaining artillery in London, then come up one to C-Zone 11, pick up two of these infantry in northern England, and then go two back down to the English Channel, and drop two infantry and two artillery off in Normandy. So two more infantry add to this stack in Normandy. And the two artillery. Okay. Then the remainder of the fleet there in 25, which consists of two carriers, and a um, destroyer. They are going to come down one, two, three to C-Zone 48. Um, they have the extra movement the carriers do because of a major facility. Now, uh, there is an Italian sub here in C-Zone 33, but again, based on last turn and the confusion we have, these are non-combat moves, so I'm assuming that I can just pass over that sub. If not, then uh, Global War 36 enthusiasts will have to decide. I've got two carriers, and it's going to end up being three destroyers and a battleship passing through there. So if he wants to try to contest that with a coastal sub, then if he can, then that's up to him. But barring that, these two destroyers... Um, and this battleship also go 1-2 down to C-Zone 48. Okay. So we'll go ahead and put the two uh, naval transports that dropped off units in Normandy there in C-Zone uh, 25 there. Okay, so then we've got our four fighters that flew off the two carriers uh, in 25 and attacked Belgium. That was one move two back into the English Channel, and three into Normandy. So those four fighters are going to land uh, in Normandy. And I think that is it for... No. Oh, hang on, I'm wrong. Okay, so then for also non-combat, we have an airborne and an air transport in London. We can move eight because of a long-range aircraft as well as an airbase. So one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, and land in northern Algeria with that airborne and that air transport. And then while we're up here, these two infantry in northern England are going to rail down to uh, London. And I believe that is it on in the European side. Then we've got our fleet in the Mediterranean. So that entire fleet um, is going to... We are going to come over one to here. And actually, I do have one more combat move. I apologize. So that entire fleet came over to uh, Sea Zone 80. And I do have two submarines in that... Uh, fleet, and we are going to convoy raid uh, this dollar line here for 
uh, the Italians. So that fleet, again, just to remind my opponents, has two subs, an empty light carrier, four destroyers, five heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, and a battle cruiser. So let's go ahead and roll here real quick. So we'll get out um, our die. So I've got red is going to be the UK, and it has its symbol on the die. And the green is the Italians, and that also has its symbol on the die. So the first sub, um, two to two, but I have a plus two for my sub. I do not believe um, the Italians have either radar or... Um, advanced anti-submarine warfare, so that should take a dollar. So the Italians should go down um, a dollar. Let's see, non-combat as well. We are going to take uh, three battleships and two uh, transports there in C-Zone 82 and come down one, uh, two, down to here, down to C-Zone 119. I know these guys are going to die. That is what Boston Bruce has assembled that fleet off of Calcutta for, but we'll do what we can. So those three will come down there. For the FEC, we are going to move this Colonial Infantry up one to Haryana with that cavalry. Then in British Malaya, we have three fighters and a, a strategic bomber. And they are all going to go one, two, three, four, five, and land in Italian Somaliland. Uh, the fighters have plus one, so that's their fifth movement, and the Strat Bomber has even more than that. So those planes should all be able to land. Again, C-Zone 122, 86, 85, 83, and then Italian Somaliland. And I believe that is it for non-combat. So on to unit placement. So we have our air base that we built this turn goes down in Normandy. We have two fighters, which we're placing in London. We have an AA gun, which we're placing in London. We have a militia that we're placing in Normandy. And I'll clean that up and let you guys know what's in Normandy here in a minute. We have our uh, Russian infantry we lend least. And Madman Dan said he wanted it in Corellia. So should be able to make its way from London up here and around Norway with no issue. So let's put him down in Corellia. And then we had... Um, a colonial infantry and a militia and a militia upgrade. So the colonial infantry is in Italian Somali land. So is the militia. And the militia upgrade is here in the Belgian Congo. So take that militia off and put him down there. And that's it for uh, the UK. And then for FEC, we bought two uh Colonial Infantry, and we're putting both of them down in British Malaya. And then for Anzac, we upgraded one militia. There was a militia in uh, Sydney, so take him off and put him in uh, Sydney, the upgrade. And that should be it for the um, Commonwealth. So let's collect income, and then I'll go over real quick and some of the territories that changed. So uh, the UK proper is at 28, and they have no bonuses. They saved a dollar, so that's 29. And then our wartime economy, or roll, 8. So that's not too bad. So 29 plus 8, 37. So $37 for uh, the UK next turn. Uh, FEC is at 4. And they still have their $2 bonus. So that should be 6 for the FEC next turn. And then Anzac is at 6. Uh, they don't have any bonus, but they saved 4. So that should give them uh, $10 to spend next turn. So it looks like um, 
37 for the UK, 6 for the FEC, and 10 for ANZAC. So now on to the free front or free French. I'll just do these guys real quick and then I'll give you guys a re recap. So the free French have six dollars to spend. They're spending five. They're going to upgrade a militia for two and buy a cavalry for three. So that's five. So they save a buck. So uh, no combat moves, but non combat, we're going to take two infantry in northern Algeria and come over one to Tunisia. And that is it for the Free French unit placement. Uh, the cavalry goes down in northern Algeria, and the one upgrade was in Tunisia. And that's it for the Free French. They collect uh, $3, and they saved a buck. So that gives them $4 to spend next turn. So now on to, let's do a little bit of a recap. Um, some things changed around there in uh, in Europe. So in Belgium, we have two Marines. In the English Channel, we have two um, naval transports. In London, we have two infantry, two fighters, a militia, and an AA. In Normandy, the UK themselves have five infantry, two artillery, three medium armor, one militia, one AA, and four fighters. And there's also two U.S. medium bombers and four U.S. infantry. In C-Zone 34, there are two uh, naval transports. In Austeria Navarre, there are two Marines and two artillery. In C-Zone 48, we have three destroyers, a battleship, and... Two empty um, fleet carriers. So I do have those naval transports currently um, defenseless in 25 and 34. However, we do have some scramble ability. So off of, in C Zone 25, there I've got the four fighters in Normandy with an air base that can scramble, and so can the two fighters from London. And I have unlimited scramble because of radar. And then down in 34, that is adjacent to the air base in Normandy. And again, there's four fighters there. So we do have a little bit of protection from any uh, possible access moves against those uh, four naval transports. Um, down in um, Sea Zone 80, um, I already told you, but I'll just go through it again real quick. An empty carry light carrier, two subs, four destroyers, five heavy cruisers, a battle cruiser, and three destroyers. In northern Algeria, we've got uh, uh, British uh, airborne and transport. We've got three French mountain infantry, a cavalry, and a militia. In Tunisia, we've got three French infantry. In Nubia, there's two infantry. In Belgian Congo, there's an infantry. In Italian Somaliland, we have... Three fighters, a strat bomber, a militia, and a colonial infantry. In C Zone 119, there's three battleships and two transports. Uh, Haryana has a cavalry and a colonial infantry. British Malaya has, I believe it's still 11 militia, three colonial infantry, two AA, and a, a coastal artillery gun. And nothing changed for the UK, or except, for, or excuse me, Australia, except for Calcutta, or <laughs> except for Sydney. I'm totally out of it right now. Um, Sydney has, it looks like, four infantry, an artillery, and a motorized. So that should be it for uh, the Commonwealth this turn. Uh, now turning things over to... Um, Global War 36 enthusiast and Italy.